Okay, picking up where we left off, if we go back to our web browser, we're on our page where we have our guest book. And back in the couple clips ago, we finally got to submit some data and get it on there. It's totally unformatted. So I guess the first thing we ought to start thinking about is how we want to present the uh, guest book submission. So let's go back to Visual Studio in our guest book. We'll open up the user control. And here's the panel where we've got the repeater. So we don't have any kind of markup or anything kind of shaping how this is put together. Um, one thing we can do, we, you know, we can either use some existing CSS classes or we can also add CSS to our skin as needed. Now we've got the main forms in this field set. And basically, I'd like to kind of make a two-column layout. Kind of, uh, so I'm going to put a, a div here with a class equals float panel. And then I'm going to move the end tag to just below the field set. And then I'm going to do another one. And this is just a CSS class I know exists that will cause the panel to float to the left, I believe. And then the other panel should float up against it. So we want that. Uh, oh, wait. We don't want this here. We just want it around. Actually, what we could do on this one is just put that CSS class right on our panel with our results. So I can just say CSS class. Oops. And we'll save that. We'll go back to the browser and we'll refresh. Doesn't seem to have done anything. Oh, you know why? It's again this situation is whenever we change the markup or anything, we have to rebuild because it doesn't copy the file up to the web. And then we we'll go back and refresh the page. And we can see that our field set is kind of moved over there, but it doesn't seem like our bottom float panel has uh, managed to float up to the top. So let's go back again. We've got float panel. There's enough room that it should. We'll work with a little CSS here. So we'll go back to mojoportal.web and we'll go under data sites one skins and one we're using. As I recall, that'll shout refresh, I think. Yeah. So if we go to our style CSS here, scroll down and we'll find float panel, and there it is. And one thing that's very um, helpful sometimes is when you're not sure what's going on with your layout, if you can just put a border, it helps you see what's going on. So we'll do that. So now if we go back to the browser, this time we didn't have to build because that CSS is part of mojoportal.web, and we can see it. And the problem is this is all just kind of laid out in one line. It doesn't, uh, it wouldn't fit over here, so it wrapped. So we need to give a little more structure to break this up. To wrap each of these in a div would be one thing we could do. Or maybe we'll have a container. And we create a class. Oops, goals. GB item for guest book item. And we'll let that be kind of the wrapper around the whole thing. And we could put spans, or and we just want to wrap that on the other side of our comment. And this will just give us something to hook to with CSS. We could use a div. A div is a block element, but if we want the span to behave like a div, we can do that with CSS as well. Now, just because we put <coughs> CSS classes doesn't mean we actually have to style those things or use those classes, but it gives us hooks. and makes it very flexible so that you could style each of these things different. Also possible to have more than one CSS class separated by white space. So we could have a uh, one common class name that it could be shared and then we could apply things in that class that will affect every one of these items. And then the other CSS class gives us a way to specifically style these items. So again, since we've changed the markup, we have to build and that's mainly just to run the post build event. We don't have to rebuild the whole solution, we just have to rebuild the project. If we go back and refresh our page, we'll see if breaking it up into spans had any impact. And it did. It still kind of kept 
each item a little too wide to float over here. Now it also seems like we've got quite a uh, left margin here on this list that we might want to get rid of. Back into our style. Oh, I guess it's in our form styles. So let's see. If we want the ordered list, well, I'm not sure if that margin is coming from this or not, but let's just put a margin left for PX here in the LI setting row. And again, if you're not sure if you're really applying a style to something, you can throw a border on there temporarily and just see, are we even, uh, are we even getting what? getting the right CSS selector. Okay, so we see that the margin is not really from the LI, it must be from the OL. If I go back to Visual Studio, that means that what I want to do is move this margin left to this guy and see if that affects it. Okay, maybe it's not really margin, but padding. It could be the field set. This is the border on the field set, right? So padding top right bottom left 15 pixels of padding on the left yeah we don't really want that do we not in this case let's try just making that five okay so it's not just a field set it would seem so let's take the border off of the list item and put it on ordered list element ah so we see that there's if it's not margin it's padding over here and we want to reduce that a bit Maybe make this a little narrower, and then maybe this guy can float up. Padding left zero, and see if that makes a difference. There you go. You see, CSS is, even for someone who understands it, is kind of a, a trial and error process. But we still, this text boxes are very wide, and so it's not really allowing this to float over here because this is all just kind of in one row. Now, we can apply some CSS and break that up a little bit. So we saw that we used the item, or the comment, for instance, we go into CSS. Maybe we'll just move this down near the bottom, keep our stuff for our custom feature here. Now remember, I told you that a span, uh, div is a block element and a span is an inline element, but you can make a span act like a div by putting display block. That will generally make something flow to a new line there. So now we managed to get it over to the right by making uh, the comment be in a, basically the equivalent of a div, a block element, and then other, the other spans had to fall beneath that. So we're getting there. I'm not going to go all the way to make this uh, beautiful and pretty. I'm more interested in showing you the development aspects, but I wanted to give a little bit of technique of how to go about working with CSS. And of course, when you're you know, done doing some of these things, you want to remove those borders that we just put on there. We don't need this border. And also, I believe on the float panel down here, we can remove that. And then if we go back on fresh, okay. Now, maybe we want to have something, it's like we know there's two entries here, but there's, they just kind of lump together. There's no visual cue. Now, some people might have put a horizontal rule or something, but you can do that with uh, CSS just by putting a border on the bottom of of that wrapper did. So for example, if we go back here, remember we created this um, GD item as the container, and go to our style, and we can say order bottom, Now we've got a little visual cue separating the items. It's still not very pretty. It's going to wrap it up for this clip, and we'll continue in the next one.